1998, MTV has this show called TRL, Total Request Live. Welcome to the show, Total Request Live, or as I would like to start right now for uh, all the kids at home watching, TRL. It is the hottest thing on afternoon television. Total Request Live, a show entirely determined by what viewers like. You have Britney Spears, you have Christina Aguilera. Every day at TRL was, was regular pandemonium. When one of the teen boy bands would come in, it was like double pandemonium. It was just completely crazy. At the time, it was all about CDs, and they cost 15 bucks, and Sync would come out with a new album, and it would sell two million in a week, which is unheard of. Lou Pearlman, for all of his faults, was an amazing casting director. He believed you had to have five members, and he believed within that five members, you had to have a guy for every girl. I noticed that fans were looking for different guys. Like they'd find something in Nick, which they would find something different than Kevin. It's great to have somebody Latino who gives an extra flavor to it. That first time I saw NSYNC, I did not think that this was going to be a massive band. Like, he really saw things in people that would not blossom for years. In Sync was in some ways more relatable to the audience than Backstreet was. They're like the kids next door. They're going to wear sports gear. Our clothes were just horrible. They were always just oversized. No one really cared. There was no stylist that came in and was like, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to fit you that. No, it was like, here's a rack of stuff, we're putting you in this, and that's it. Hi, oh we're in sync. Show us the way to the snake house. <laughs> and then we'd get so busy, we didn't have time to cut our hair or to put bleach in our hair. So that's when I started just kind of getting this bleach and putting it in my hair and just putting my fingertips in it. And that's how the frosted tips were born. <laughs> The boy bands become such a huge part of pop culture. Ben Stiller and Andy Dick do a parody of them on the MTV Music Awards. Do you still want me? Do you still want me around? <laughs> Lou became a bit of a celebrity himself. He would be at their shows, and fans would be like, Big Papa, it's Lou. Big dog, I have. Lou wanted to be famous, period, end of sentence. That is what he was in this to do. Perlman really wanted to become a major music mogul. We just thought that it was us and the Backstreet Boys, and that's all that he was really focusing on right now, not knowing that he was developing tons of bands on the side. LFO, which I st think stands for Light Funky Ones. Kids on the block, had a bunch of hits. Records a song called Summer Girls. He started C Note. Take five. He was hoping to be able to continue to milk the market. So remember, around this time, the Spice Girls were huge with their hit Wannabe. If you wanna be my lover, you have got to give. So it made sense to Perlman that maybe he should get into the girl band business as well. We came out with a girls group called Innocence. He almost signed one of the most famous female stars of all time. Here is 10-year-old Britney Spears. After she loses on Star Search. Britney. And she goes on to be in the Mickey Mouse Club. Britney Spears was almost in Lou Pearlman's girl group, Innocence. I don't care what you decided she didn't want to stay with the group. She decided to go solo, but we went on and continued to develop uh, the girls' band. He's a little bit of old school for it. They go a little something like this. Perlman also manages a young boy named Aaron Carter, the little brother of Nick Carter. With his stable of musical acts, sometimes Perlman liked to compare his company to Motown. A lot of synergy to Motown. You had the four tops, we have Sino. You have the Temptations, but we have Backstreet Boys. You take five, that was the Jackson Five. You have the Supremes, we have Innocence. We have a lot of synergy between that. Barry Gordy created Motown, but he actually produced and co-wrote many of their legendary songs, like ABC for the Jackson Five, and the classic Do You Love Me by the Motown group, The Contours. Do you love me? No, he was never very gordy. I've heard this. This is a, this is okay, okay. Like he was never. He was barely in a recording studio. He didn't like work on their records. Lou sat back and counted the money coming in. 
What most people didn't know about Perlman was that in addition to being a boy band impresario, Perlman has built out Transcon into a mega brand. Transcontinental Companies is a conglomerate. And what we have, for example, is Transcontinental Airlines, Transcontinental Foods, Transcontinental Entertainment. We've gone into the movie business now. That was a natural progression for us was to go into the movies. Lou Perlman writes and bankrolls a movie called Long Shot. It's a vanity project. It's like it sort of shows off this cavalcade of stars. In sync. LFO. It's got cameos from Britney Spears as a flight attendant. Strong grip. Must have been some dream you had. Justin Timberlake as a car valet guy. Art Garfunkel, the cousin he always talked about, is in the movie. I'm Art Garfunkel, and I just want to make a purchase. He himself is in it as well. It's OK. I checked it already. Perman plays a cop named Captain Lewis, and he uncovers a stock scandal, which, looking back on things, is kind of ironic, considering how he ended up. Do you have any more jelly donuts? The movie went straight to the Disney Channel. I think it aired a couple of times and was never heard from again. But fans couldn't hear enough of NSYNC, and so while they're topping the charts, some band members are starting to wonder why they haven't seen a paycheck. We were getting our $35 a day per diem. I was in the biggest band in the world and selling millions of records, and someone's making millions and millions, but I can't even afford my apartment in Orlando. I couldn't even get a car. So one day in 1998, Perlman tells the band he wants to have a big celebration dinner and wants to do an official check presentation ceremony. Everyone was there to, to have this great celebration of all of our hard work finally paying off. And at the end of the dinner, we, you know, we have all these envelopes sitting in front of us. And I knew my life was about to change. You know, I knew we had worked so hard. So I knew what that check should be, or I was hoping would be. I mean, in the best and best of worlds, a million dollars would have been like, oh my God. That's what I thought we deserved. And then I open up the check and it is $10,000. I, I didn't want to seem ungrateful because, you know, at that point, yes, $10,000 was a lot of money. And we went back to the hotel room and that's when it all just hit me. I was so disappointed and I ripped up the check like I did. I knew something was wrong. He has no idea how bad things are going to get. They'll find out that his father figure, Big Papa, was a total con man. But that's not all. You never automatically thought that there was something devious behind the requests. Playing chicken in the pool. Who's going to be on my shoulders? You know? <laughs> None of those things seem weird at the time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.